Thank you, Mr. President. Um, colleagues, I rise in opposition to HBA 59. I was pleased to hear the senator from the 23rd in his presentation reassure us that you know only students who are 21, uh, et cetera, would be permitted to lawfully carry uh, weapons on college campuses. So I do think that it is a striking, glaring, and upsetting omission that we have failed to exclude daycare centers in this legislation in places where weapons would not be allowed. Um, we don't allow guns in schools from kindergarten through 12th grade. In fact, they were specifically excluded by, by this chamber two years ago in the passage of House Bill 60. This was a wise decision and, of course, a policy that's uniformly agreed to across our state. But today, we're, we're, we're preparing to allow them in preschools. I came here this morning to try to improve this bill, and I do uh, have an amendment that would exclude the daycares and preschools on our college campuses as uh, places where weapons would, would be able to be excluded, but unfortunately, obviously, was not able to offer that amendment. I am certain that this was an inadvertent oversight and one that we should fix, one that we do have time to fix, and it's a shame that we are not properly debating whether or not we, we are going to keep them out of the hands of toddlers. Many of our colleges and universities have daycares on their campus. I, I, I've put this on all of your desks. Albany State University, the Albany State University Early Learning Center, Augusta University, Augusta University Child Care Center, 121 children. Georgia Tech, 121. Georgia Southern, 66. Uh, Georgia State, got an got a, uh, email from a constituent of mine whose daughter, toddler, goes to the Suttles Child Care Center at Georgia State. She's very concerned that we have failed to exclude her daughter's daycare from where guns will now be allowed on campus. University of West Georgia, University of Georgia got, has two of them, 146 kids, 101 kids in the other. Technical colleges, Albany Technical, 126 kids. Gwinnett Technical College, the Hudgens Early Education Center has capacity for 379 toddlers and preschoolers. Now, if you just look at the enrollment numbers that we were able to put together just in the last day after realizing that this was a problem in uh, this legislation, the uh, potential enrollment is uh, 1,725 very small children. Um, you know, these, these daycares contain our tiniest citizens. Their brains are just forming. My children right now go to a preschool. My boys, six and three and all other preschool children should be drawing pictures of trees and playing with blocks. These are citizens who are actually defenseless. We, we do need to protect these citizens. They should not have to worry about who might be carrying a gun. Certainly those that care for them every day, those that are teaching them should not have to worry about who might walk in carrying a gun. And don't make their parents, their parents worry about a terrible accident that could occur due to the presence of a weapon, much like this you know, mom in Florida who was just uh, shot through the back um, just a day or so ago by her four-year-old and, of course, nearer and dearer to my heart, the two-year-old in Ackworth who killed himself uh, just a few months ago due to a gun lying around while his dad went to change clothes. Now, these are not isolated incidents. Uh, once a week, on average, a small child finds a gun, points it at himself or herself or someone else, and pulls the trigger. And there are at least 315 minors killed in firearms accidents around the country every year. Those are real numbers, and, and, and they're a lot higher than any stats that we hear about, you know, rapes averted. The statistic I have on that is uh, one person from that national crime um, survey that the senator from the 23rd referenced. I've seen another reference to averted by weapons, but no clarification of the type of weapon, and that number was 26. The data I have from that exact same national crime victim survey is one 
averted from um, someone who, who was carrying a weapon, of rape averted, whereas we know that there are over 300 babies dead every year due to the presence of weapons. And now we will um, be opening them up on our college campuses, which should be safe and sacred places. So these centers absolutely need to be exempted from the areas where people can carry concealed weapons. And I think that this, that's probably something that we can all agree on. Uh, another, another thing that I wanted to mention is that, you know, as we, as we all know, college kids don't make the best decisions. I don't need to be told this. Anyone who's gone to college, had a child in college, anyone, in fact, who's lived in our, in our society knows that college kids don't have fully formed brains. High school kids, of course, have even less fully formed brains, and we do have high school kids taking college classes, and even more now through our excellent Move On When Ready program. Brain science that has been emerging um, in the last years tells us that the critical parts of the brain that are involved in decision making are not fully developed until age 25. That's the part of the brain that helps you inhibit impulses. Kids get angry more easily. They don't calm down as readily. They make, as we all know, and you don't need a PhD to know it, rash decisions. And guns raise the consequences for everybody. Let's let these kids learn on a campus where they can test out the adult world while still benefiting from the structure and care of a university. And as the senator from the 36 uh, already has ably pointed out, all the folks that we have hired, that we pay our tax money to, that are charged with running these campuses, making them excellent academic institutions, and keeping our students safe, are all uniformly and totally opposed to this legislation. They do not think it makes anyone safer. They think it makes their job of letting these kids test out the real world much more difficult. I also hear from professors. They're worried about holding office hours when a student comes to see them who's mad about their grade. Can't we decide to at least let them make their offices gun-free? And what about classrooms? We want and expect professors to challenge students and engage in debate. The University of Houston is telling its professors to remove challenging topics from their lectures and curb their office hours and not go there with that student. That's, that's the type of discussion that's happening all across faculty in Texas as they prepare to implement campus carry. And the faculty is rising up to voice their frustration and their opposition. Every day, my office is getting emails and calls from parents of students who are in college in Georgia or planning to go. They say their children will be going elsewhere to college if this law passes. University of Georgia and Georgia Tech have both benefited in national rankings because of the, the HOPE scholarship, the work with that, that this body has done. It's kept our, some of our brightest students here in Georgia. This change in policy, and we had the first, I think, person to testify uh, at the Senate Judiciary hearing said, my son at Georgia Tech, that's where he wanted to go, but I may be transferring him. This could push them out of state and lead to a brain drain. And it's not just of the students, of course. I mean, I can tell you my students will not attend a college where guns are allowed on campus. My boys, when they're ready for college, I will not, I will not send them to a college that allows guns because I know it doesn't make them safer. And it says something to me about how much you value learning and the attitude that, that, that whatever that state is had toward, has towards its institutions of higher learning. And as a mom, that matters to me. And it matters to a lot of other moms too. So be careful, we will lose students from this. And that's a shame, that's a real shame. And even worse, we will lose faculty from this. You try all the time to attract talented faculty. That's how you keep, your, you keep yourself competitive. You know, the Hope Scholarship, as I was just mentioning, is, has helped us so much to do those things. Let's not undermine it. I was there was a piece in The Atlantic by a Georgia Tech professor. He says, Texas's law has incited a spate of distress among educators. Uh, Fritz Steiner, UT's, UT Austin's Dean of Architecture, fairly renowned, cited the law as a catalyst for seeking another position. He's uh, leaving University of Texas. University of Virginia media studies professor 
who is a UT Austin alumnus, withdrew his candidacy to go there as a finalist for their uh, College of Communications due to the new gun law there. University administrators don't like the, this policy either. We've already been through how they oppose it, how all 29 police chiefs oppose it, um, presidents of every university. And of course, the students do too. I, I also put on your desk the survey conducted by Georgia Tech Student Government Association two weeks ago demonstrating that they do not at all support what we are apparently forcing uh, upon them, and that's a shame. And these are real concerns. Everything I've been talking about are real concerns, and, and you know, they were the concerns of Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. In 1824, when they set out the charter for my alma mater, the University of Virginia, saying that guns would not be allowed on campus there. I'm sure many of you remember who the author of the Second Amendment is, James Madison. And he felt, and Thomas Jefferson felt, that in no way should guns be allowed on college campuses. If the founding fathers of our country who drafted the Second Amendment wanted guns banned from the cap campus, who are we to disagree? Uh, colleagues, we, we, I, I'm here voicing what's on the minds of 80%, almost 80% of Georgians. This bill is not ready. We don't need to rush into anything. 80% of Georgians, we got nothing to fear. We got nothing to fear politically. 80% of Georgians. I, I encourage you to vote against this legislation. I'm happy to take questions. Chair Ignatius, Center on the 45th for a question. Thank you. Uh, Senator, would you yield? Absolutely. Senator, is it not true that you and I are colleagues that have Absolutely. a great Absolutely. interest in children over these years? And mine is a very long history, and yours is just starting in this room, but is that not true that we have a great interest in children? It is true, Senator, and I, I often try to tell you how much I respect all of your work on behalf of children. Really admire everything that you have done. Thank you, Senator, and I admire yours, too. <laughs> Senator, I just wanted to ask you a question since you were stating all those statistics, and I appreciate all that uh, research that you did into it, but isn't there also a, a handout on our desk? And I believe it's from the 2014 Department of Education Campus Safety and Security Data Analysis. And it gives an analysis, I'm sure you read it when you were at your desk, about statistics from all the different universities. And it shows the criminal element and the increase. And I believe at the bottom it tells the total of the incidence of burglary was 3,886 rapes on campus, which you and I both have mm -hmm. had a big interest in. 1,078 burglaries and arsons, uh, aggravated assaults, neglect, rapes, robberies, murders. And you can see, if you read it, I'm not sure if you did, but I guess my question is, over time, would you not agree that the criminal element has changed? not just in society, but it's migrated onto the campuses, and it's a reflection of what is going on, because isn't it true just a few years ago you had never even heard of home invasions? I hadn't. But isn't it true that crime is becoming more pervasive and insistent in all of society? Is that not true? Well, Senator, I actually don't think that is true. Uh, let me first say that I did not get to study in detail the handout that you're talking about, but I do have several things I would, I would say to that. Um, number one, crime and violent crime has significantly fallen in our country over the last decades. Uh, number two, college campuses are significantly safer than the surrounding communities. Um, Number three, if there is a problem with increased crime on campus, something that none of us, you and I would agree, should take lightly, I think we need to be talking to our campus security chiefs about what additional resources or different way of doing things they might need. Um, all 29 of them are against this, so apparently the people whose job it is don't agree with the prescription that we are forcing upon them. And I, I would suggest, you know, respectfully that they might I, I certainly feel that they know much more about it than I do. Okay, so I'll, let me put that, they're against it. And you know, lastly, um, the problem with the number of 
crimes averted. The problem with the whole thing, first of all, I would suggest that when I was in a sorority at the University of Virginia in 1996, we had a training in my sorority on self-defense, and we also had, had mace. I'm not sure how we've gotten away from things like that and we're racing toward firearms, which have much more deadly consequences, but fine, all right. So personally, I think that's what we should be talking about. We're not, fine, we're talking about guns. The problem is that crimes averted are dwarfed by the number of suicides and accidents and other um, incidents that then blow up and are deadly even by accident due to the presence of a weapon. And that just dwarfs, it, there's no credible study that suggests that any of that, that any crime averted is in any way higher than all of the other consequences that are obviously not good from the presence of weapons. That's the problem. And I was telling the senator, um, you know, my seatmate from the 54th, look, if you wanna have a gun in your house, protect yourself in your home, I totally get it, that is awesome. But when you're bringing it out in public, there are other consequences. And I'm just gonna say it one more time, there's just no credible evidence that any, that any, any diminution in crime is just dwarfed by accidents, suicides, and other uh, deadly consequences. And that's just the reality. Chair, so that's why I can't agree with it. Chair, can I ask Senator 24th? Lady in the well, will you yield? Absolutely, to our retiring colleague, and we sure are gonna miss well, you. I wanna ask you, a couple, one question mainly, but I want to just say that um, you have so much information and you're so passionate about what you believe, and, and I respect that. And Thank you. I couldn't keep up with a lot of it. My <laughs> comprehension level wasn't catching up with you. I did not, I did not believe that at all. But, <laughs> but I want to ask you one big question. Sure. You said you went to the University of Virginia. I assume that you went to some college. You seem educated to me. Um, supposing that you were coming to your dormitory one evening from home, and you were walking down the walk path to your dormitory, and you were snatched off of that walkway by one or two or the whatever it was, and you were pulled into the bushes and was raped or ravished or hurt or shot or killed, would you prefer not to have a, a, a weapon of some description to help save your life that night? Senator, it's a, it's a fair point and I appreciate the emotional terms you put it in. The problem with this debate actually is that I get it. I get why people think that they would actually be safer with a weapon. It's an emotional reaction, it's a gut reaction, and it completely makes sense. The problem is people are objectively far less safe when there are weapons involved. And, it, and under your scenario, the problem is that gun would be much more likely, as we know throughout decades of data, to be used against me. That's the problem. Well, you didn't answer my question, I don't think. Let me excuse me. No, I, I, don't, I, I, I do not think I would be safer because it's more likely that it would be used against me. That's, okay. that's my answer. So you would be willing to give your li take a chance to give in your life rather than having a weapon? Senator, there are many people whose lives have been lost because of the presence of weapons. And those dwarf the numbers who have been saved because of the presence of a weapon. So on balance, yes, I know I'm not safer with guns around. Thank you very much. Chair, can I ask Senator 33rd for a question? Thank you, Mr. President. Will the Senator yield? Sure. Senator, I uh, served in the military for 33 years, so I've seen everything, well, just about everything that goes bang, pow, zoom, zap. <laughs> so I've been around guns most of my life or weapons. I also worked in a New York City police precinct. I wasn't a police officer, but I worked there for a number of years, and so I understand weapons is what I'm trying to say. And I also was an educator. You know, I taught for many years, and I remember people say that there's no prayer in school, but every Friday when I would give the little kids their spelling test or a reading test, I could see them making the sign of the cross and praying. 
But uh, I have a somewhat rhetorical question for you. If you were, oh, by the way, you are my sweet mate, and I yeah. appreciate your professionalism <laughs> and being a mentor to me. Uh, if you were a college professor and a student had a disagreement with a grade and they came to meet you in your office one evening with a Glock on their hip to discuss you giving them a failing grade, how would you feel at that moment? I would feel bullied and af afraid. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. No further questions. Thank you. I, I yield the well.